All right, so we're going to talk about using response factors in chromatography. Uh, essentially, a response factor is a correlation between how much stuff you have in a, in a sample and the reading that you end up getting out of that sample. So let's say you've run some kind of chromatography sample. So your, your x-axis is going to be time here. And your abundance, it depends on the detector that you're talking about. But generally, you would measure the area of a particular peak. So let's say you have an internal standard. We'll go ahead and call that S. And let's say that you run an internal standard. You know exactly how much is in there. Um, for example, let's go ahead and say that, that you know that there are the concentration of the solution that you ran is 0 0.439 mole per liter. So that would be your S concentration. And you get this pretty little peak for, for your standard there, and you find out that it is about, as nearly about 518. Then you run another sample. We'll go ahead and call that X. And this would be your analyte. This would be the thing that you are eventually interested in determining, but first you have to run one that you actually know the concentration of. And for this particular one, let's say you get a response of 623. And again, you would know the concentration. Let's say you find it to be 0 0.0725 mole per liter. Well, we'd have to find a way to relate the concentration and the area together. And when you have two, um, two known amounts and two known areas, you can actually figure out how the, act the specific instrument is responding. And we determine that using uh, the response factor formula, which is this, x. So the area of one thing over the concentration of it, it being the analyte that you're interested in, is equal to the response factor times the area of the standard over the concentration of the standard. And with some simple plug and chug, we know that the area of x was 623. We know that its concentration, 0 0.0725, We'll set that equal to some response factor F times the area of S, which is 518 we determined, divided by the concentration of S, which is 0.0439. And if you divide both sides by this, this quotient here, you will find out that F is equal to 0.728. Two six, and it would have three sig figs, and be unitless as well. So this is our response factor. Essentially, it's, it's almost a, a decimal percent, saying, "Hey, seventy-three percent is is the relationship between the two." And so now, when we um, maybe use this in further calculations, let's say we run another sample. And we find that the peak areas are 842 for x and 765 for s. And let's say we know the concentration of s. In this case, we'll determine, let's say it was given to you in the problem that s has a concentration of 0 0.02. 8075, three sig figs, and you want to find x, well the beautiful thing is you already know the response factor um, which we determined in the previous problem, and so it's going to be a matter of plugging and chugging. Our area of x we know is 842, we're going to see if we can determine the concentration of an, our analyte, it's unknown. And we're going to set that equal to F
times the con uh, the area of our standard, which is 765. Divided, the, divided by the concentration of our standard, which is 0 0.028075 mole per liter. And through a little bit of algebra, you can find out that x is equal to 0 0.04. Two four mole per liter. So step number one, we had to know the analyte in the st in the uh, standard. We had to actually know their concentration in order to determine the relationship between them, and then we were able to utilize that information to figure out an unknown amount of some analyte. And that is how we use a response factor.